Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got for you a collab that I am hosting along with another girl, Cute Nail Art 96 on Instagram. I will have the playlist linked in the iCards above and I do want you guys to go check out their videos and subscribe to their channels because they're all wonderful girls with some super cute trendy nail art techniques for you. So before I get into the video, I do want to remind you to hit subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out on one of my videos. Getting right into it, I'm just showing you guys all the products that we will be working with today. The only thing I failed to show in this was my ombre brush, which I will be using to do the glitter fade. Of course, everything will be linked down in the description box below. So if you have any questions about what I'm using, it is all linked down there for you. Mostly we'll be using some gel polishes, a couple from Beatles, a few from Model 1s. We'll be using some gel paints um, by Vrenmal. It's no longer available on Amazon, but Savaland is kind of like the parent company. And they do have a set that I will have linked down for you as well. Starting right out, we are just coating the nail in the white gel polish. And I'm making sure to clean up any excess that may have touched the cuticle with a cleanup brush before fully curing. I am going to do two coats of every color. And I did not put a base gel on these nails because this is my practice hand. But doing this on yourself, you will wanna put down a base coat before going in with your gel polish. That will help it to adhere to the nail. And when using gel polish, it is a bit different than regular nail polish. When using nail polish, I paint at kind of a 45 degree angle. But using a gel polish like this, you want to lay down your brush as flat as possible. So if you see, I'm pushing it back towards the cuticle and making sure it's nice and tight without touching. And then I'm laying the brush down almost completely flat and gliding the polish along the surface. This is gonna give you a nice smooth application and allow it to not have any lumps or bumps. This nude one, I did have a bit of a problem with having some bumps even though I was applying it very smoothly. It just doesn't self-level um, as much as the other ones did. However, I will fix it in, in the end with top coat so I will teach you guys a trick on how to even out the nail surface and make it completely smooth to the touch using just the top coat. Just going to go in with a second coat of all of my polishes before we get started with the nail art. Okay, so on this nail, the first coat was that rose gold type of glitter polish. And this second coat is actually going to be a more chunky gold glitter. And then I'm going to use both the rose gold polish and the chunky glitter to do my glitter ombre on my nude nails. So I'm laying down the gold or this rose gold gel polish and I'm using an ombre brush to blend it back into the nail. I will have this linked down in the description box for you guys, 
but I will have a less expensive option that you can get from Amazon as well. This brush I got from Red Iguana, which is who I ordered my practice hand from. When I ordered it, I needed a, just a little bit more in my cart to get free shipping, so I thought it, the brush costs as much as the shipping, might as well get the brush. So I also did use a brush before this one that I had made myself. So if you want to know how to make an ombre brush, let me know and I can include that in one of my videos for you. But I did find one on Amazon that's basically the same as this, but at like half the price. So I'll have that linked in the description box as well. So once I did that glitter ombre on both this nail and the thumb, I'm moving into my Blooming Roses. So I'm using this Blooming Gel by Born Pretty. I do have a discount code with Born Pretty, which will be in the description box as well. It's in all of my videos. All of my discount codes are linked in that description box. So I laid down a very thin coat of that Blooming Gel and then while it is still wet without curing, I'm going in with my gel polish that I used on my other nail and a detail brush and creating my rose. I know it's hard to see what I'm doing here. My hand keeps getting in the way every time I go to do the opposite side of the petal. You'll see on the white one that I'm about to do right now exactly what it is that I was doing. But with this black one, I'm going to leave it more sketchy looking. So I wanted my lines to be more pointed in the center, more of like a V shape rather than a rounded petal. So um, I just made sure that I flicked it one way and then went from the other side and flicked it down the other way to keep it kind of pointed. With this white one, it's a very similar technique, but I'm going to leave the petals a little bit more rounded so that it looks a bit more natural. When doing these blooming roses, you're not shooting for perfection here. Everything in nature is kind of asymmetrical. So, so in nature, when you find a real rose, everything can be kind of um, not perfect, I guess. <laughs> um, but basically, if you don't want it to look exactly perfect. So once I got that bloomed and laid out the way that I wanted it, I cured it and now I'm going in with my gel paint, which is more pigmented. And I'm going to put in some highlights. I'm basically just going to apply a white highlight along the base of each of these petals. This is gonna help to make the rose look a little bit more three-dimensional, give it a bit more of a pop just so that you can really make out exactly what it is. And like I said, it'll give it some depth and dimension to it. Also, when I was practicing this technique, I wiped the nail off about three different times. And then finally, I followed all the way through to the highlights, even though I didn't like the way that the rose looked. When I finished with the highlights in the end, I loved it. So my advice to you will be, to just continue and follow through with your design because the way that it looks after you apply those highlights is not the way that it's gonna look before. So just keep going. Practice makes perfect. Practice will help you get to a design that you're comfortable and confident in. So I'm just using that same white gel paint to apply a little leaf in the corner and then I'm going back in with my gel polish in black and just adding a little bit more detail and giving it kind of that line down the center so you can tell it's a leaf, not a petal. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and add the highlights onto my black rose. This one, I do want it to look more sketchy and less realistic. So I am using the rose gold glitter that I used on the full nail and in my glitter fade, and I'm applying the highlight along the base of the, each petal, just the same way that I did on the white one, except for these ones, I'm going to leave them in that pointed shape. I'm not rounding out the highlights. I will apply two layers of the highlights just to make sure that there is enough 
color depth and you can really see that glitter. And then I'm gonna go back in and use the black gel paint just to add a little bit more detail and really add more to that sketchy look. I want to know from you guys which one of these do you like more do you like the more realistic look like the white one or do you like the more sketchy look like this one will be here in just a moment after I add in that black paint my favorite one is the white one but my daughter's favorite is the sketchy one the one that I'm currently doing so I want to know from you guys what do you think and which one do you you prefer my daughter loved the look of this sketchy one, so if you guys let me know, maybe I can convince her to let me do this on her, and I can film it for you guys and get you a better angle so you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. So leave some comments below. Say yes, we want to see you do your daughter's nails, and I'll try to convince her. I'll show her your comments and say, see, the viewers want it. You got to do it. <laughs> She's only 10, so I'd have to apply some tips to give more of a nail bed because she's got very tiny nail beds. Okay, just giving that a final cure, and then I'm going to go in with my top coat. So... The way that we're going to do this is I'm going to go and coat all of the nails once with top coat and then I'm going to go ahead and cure that. Once I have done that on all of the nails and that has been cured, I'm going to add an additional layer that is going to smooth out the surface of the nail and get rid of any imperfections. I know you can see on the nude nails, the middle and the thumb that there are some lumps and bumps, but we're going to use the second layer of top coat to even that out and in the end you are not going to be able to see that at all. Okay, so we're just going to make sure we cure that for a full minute. Then I'm going to go in and apply my second layer of top coat. We're going to start with coating the entire nail. Then we're going to dip it in while it's still wet. Grab a bigger bead of the top coat and float it down the surface of the nail right down the center. Because I've applied a kind of slip layer over the entire surface of the nail, when we grab that larger bead and float it down the center, it's going to flow out through the rest of the nail and give you a perfectly smooth surface. It's kind of like um, a builder gel technique where you're guiding that product to exactly where you need it to be. With this nude nail, I noticed that the sidewalls towards the tip, they weren't um, particularly even. The glitter kind of flared out right at the tip and I didn't like the way that that looked. So I'm just using the top coat just to even out those sidewalls. And I am going to do three or four layers on this one because of that lumpiness and because I want those sidewalls to be perfectly straight in that coffin shape. There's a lot you can do with top coat to perfect the nail surface. You just need to know how to use it. So I hope you guys find this tip helpful. If you are trying this tip and it's not working, what you can do is apply the first layer of top coat. Make sure you use a no cleanse top coat so you have no inhibition layer, no sticky layer. Then use a 180 grit or 220 grit buffer. Go ahead and buff over the surface of that top coat. And because you did put the top coat on there, it's going to protect most of the color and still allow you to smooth out the surface a bit. It doesn't have to be completely smooth, just mostly smooth. Then you'll cleanse off the dust and go in with this technique of applying the sli slip layer and then applying the extra down the center and it will smooth that nail right out. So I really hope you guys like that tip. Make sure you know you let me know down below if you find that to be helpful. Um, I know when I first saw someone do that technique, I can't remember, I know I saw it on Instagram, but I can't remember who it was I saw do it, but just, it was so helpful to me, and now I use it all the time. 
But that's basically it. I'll give it a final cure and we will be done. I do want to give a big thank you to the girls who participated in my collab with me. I really appreciate each and every one of them and they all deserve to have you guys go watch their videos. Hit subscribe so that you can get their videos straight to your subscription inbox. But that's it guys. Make sure you let me know what you think down below. Of course, if you have any questions, suggestions, or requests for different sets, let me know down below. I love to hear from you. Make sure to hit like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.